All right, folks, I am here to introduce to you a great operating system uh, called Linux Mint 17.1, codename Rebecca. It's a great uh, operating system. Uh, let's enter, go ahead and introduce you to some key features. If you notice down here at the bottom, we got this beautiful, beautiful applications bar. Okay, it's got some of my favorite programs on it. Now, the thing is, it did not come standard. And what I had to do was I had to download it from the software manager, and it was called Docky, D-O-C-K-Y. So, uh, once I got Docky on here, I started dropping my icons in pretty easily and never really looked back. And the, what I did is I just clicked on the applications menu and found the one I like, say I like this, I can actually just drop it in there if I want to. But anyway, that's, that was kind of neat. Anyway. Uh, so that was not very difficult, but this up here, um, this thing, it was down here. I didn't like that. I deleted it out. Then I just told it to re-add the bar to add the bar. Uh, it's pretty easy. You just go to, you know, right click anywhere on the panel, then go panel, then you can add the panel and then I'll ask you what kind of panel you want an empty panel, group panel. I always just choose default and you'll get this back. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's one of the things. Um, but like I was, uh, showing you earlier, um, I really like, uh, like it. it loads nice. It loads smooth. It's very playful, but let's take a look at these applications to give you some ideas, some things you might want to install on your computer. These are my favorite apps. Um, Firefox, web browser, of course, um, Dolphin, Animal Rock, Audacity, Colar, Paint, I think it's coal then our paint that's the way I look at it the way I pronounce it you have GIMP Inkscape you have a scanner program uh, Kazam which is the uh, piece of software I'm using to record this uh, screencast then there's another one a simple screen recorder not as simple as Kazam but it's, it's good a webcam program OpenShot which is um, Video editing program, a video a video editing program that you can use to make slideshows and whatnot. Movies, uh, make your own movies. You know, take your movies, your little pieces of video, maybe from your webcam and drop on there, or from your screencast and drop them in there, or your pictures. Uh, Caden Live does the same thing. It's just a step up, you know, quite a bit, about ten times stronger. Uh, it's a little bit more harder to use, so mostly you probably want to stick with OpenShot unless you're very experienced okay then you have VLC um, it's just a you know, it's a very powerful media uh, player I uh, haven't used all the features of it so I can't really elaborate more than that but it but it is great for playing DVDs and things like that okay K3B a great burning program Skype uh, home bank I love this for my uh, banking okay LibreOffice oh but yeah home bank it's something that you can use to keep track of your checkbook and everything. You know, you can download uh, the Microsoft money files from your bank's website and then just import them in. Pretty pretty standard. Uh, LibreOffice, uh, love this. You know, see how fast it loads? Trust me, I do not have a very new computer. My computer is probably a 2009 model from all the, once I bought all the parts and everything, it's, a t it's 2009 when the uh, processor was made. I think the motherboard was made in 2008. Uh, so, but yeah, it was, it was a self-built. This is your torrent application that you can use to download your torrents. Um, your FTP file transfer. Karaoke, if you like that kind of stuff. TeamViewer. Like I said, some of these are not installed. I installed them myself. Update manager. Uh, software manager and system settings and whew, this is a big bad boy so you might not want to have it on your desktop but I do some weird stuff sometimes so it's there a partition manager and this will find any files or folders on your computer and then of course no items in the trash it says so that's all. these are my favorite programs it runs really nice you see that very smooth Ooh, fun fun and another thing that I had to do was add the the day and the month the time onto my clock that was very aggravating in the beginning but I'll show you really quickly how I did that I just got on the clock itself I right-clicked and I went to digital clock settings 
and then I chose the long date and then it done something really weird and then I had to restart the computer what it did is it put the the clock's time right here on top of my Wednesday but when I restarted the computer it, it showed it nicely anyway and then one thing I did have to do was I did have to change the custom color to white so I could see it because when it was black oh man I had the hardest time seeing it so but anyway I changed it to white and it's all been great after that so but you can change it to red or yellow if you want to whatever you want so but there's that and one of the things that I want to show you in case any of you decide you might want me to install this on your computers this Linux Met 17.1 codename Rebecca is one of the nice features of this operating system is control of the internet searching capabilities of your children or <laughs> even your friends or, or your spouse and here's what I'm talking about All right, up here you can actually pull down all the applications that are actually installed on the uh, computer so you can click here and one of those is a domain blocker it's parental controls and when you try to access it it's going to ask you for your password once you have chosen your password or you you know for your system then you know you go ahead and you type that in and boom you know you can block that domain so like if I want to block say uh, Google then I'm going to say www.google.com I want to block Google well it's stored it in there then you can click close okay now let's go and check this Google out okay so you can click on that and then notice that Google is blocked what the crap they cannot go to Google well let's see if they can go to Google slash I don't know stats or something you can't do anything. Anything with the word Google is blocked. Wow. Huh. Let's close it down now. Let's go back to our domain. Okay. And usually what you can do is you can scroll over to recently used. So you don't have to keep typing it in. Alright. So I will go back to my domain blocker. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to click close. Okay. And now I get ready to go back and load mine. Computer, it is up and it is running. Wow, that is awesome. So it's able to block domains, so you can control what's being done at your house. You can control where they're going. Uh, the only time that I think that this would probably be a pain in the butt is if you had to do this to like 25 or 30 computers. But in time, you could probably do it pretty quickly. You know, by learning more about Linux and being able to change. You know, being able to change. Uh, configuration files and everything just bring your thumb drive and drop them in there but anyway um, I just thought I'd share this and show you guys what's going on and um, maybe you might be interested in this and another great thing about this Linux Mint 17.1 Rebecca is it's very 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 hard for it to get viruses that actually will affect the system because before anything can run it being Linux you have to be able to you know type in that password and unless that password's typed in you can't install it you know nothing's going to run or initiate without that password so it's locked up tight just remember any machine is able to catch a virus so this machine could get a windows virus on it but it's not going to interfere with anything because a, a windows machine virus will not really bother a linux machine because it's not written for a linux machine so that's another another great thing so you know and hackers if they're going to hack a linux machine they're going to try and go after a, a big big money machine like like of a bank or some entity like that a healthcare type uh, system or you know some type of big network and well they're not going to go and go to the average joe and john's or jan's uh house and hack their computer just to try to get to their stuff so Anyway, um, like I said, this is it. It's Rebecca. Oh, let me at least show you one thing that you can do. Uh, just in case if you want to download uh, Google, uh, the Google um, Chrome browser. So let me type in that. Google Chrome browser. Okay. The Chrome browser by Google. 
all right here it is uh, I want to download this and it's identified the system that I'm on as being Debian or Ubuntu or Fedora and OpenSUSE so here's here's something you need to know uh, Linux Mint 17.1 codename Rebecca is a Debian and Ubuntu system it's built off of Ubuntu it uses the same programs the same uh, software resources so let me show you how to install something so I'm going to click download this and it notices right by default that this is a 32-bit and it is I'm going to say I'm going to accept this and install this so boom it's going to ask me how I want to run this I'm going to choose to open it with this yeah I guess that installer but if you don't want if you don't if you're not sure you can always save the file but anyway just go ahead and say okay now let's see if it's done it says it's done so open the containing folder whoops let's see open the containing folder choose all right open package being installed all right so here we go the this package installer for Google Chrome is ready to open I'm gonna click install the package it wants my password I have to give it my password before it will install anything and it's running it's installing I'm sorry the video is long but I just want to show you that's really not that bad as far as installing things so but the software has to be specific to the machine so that's kind of a drawback I mean you can't just install any Windows uh, in any Windows software on here you there are some you can install because they use a program called wine so it's not bad all right this thing says done so let's go ahead and close this and let's actually go look for this Google okay let's type in Google let's see I don't see Google I'm not typing Chrome I don't see Chrome let's go to the applications let's look in the internet up oh, there it is Google Chrome I don't know why I didn't pick it up by default, but I want to click on this icon and I'm going to drag it and drop it down here right beside Firefox. So now I've got the Chrome Chrome browser. Don't want to make it. <laughs> no, I don't want it to be my default. So, okay. And lo and behold, I now have the Chrome browser installed. It's like this application is this. Do I want to? Passwords match. All right, this application has requested to open the KDE wallet. This is used to store sensitive data. Secure fashion. Please enter a password to use this wallet or click cancel to deny the application. So let's just go ahead and click cancel to deny it. So boom, there's that. So, yeah, not too bad. See how easy that was to add Google Chrome to the computer? Once again, back to using Firefox. So anyway like i said if you are interested in this let me know and i'll try to hook you up all right guys you have a good one finish recording